Hi everyone and welcome to my knitting podcast. Today is episode 28 if I'm not mistaken and uh, yeah here I talk about all things knitting and spinning so I think I coined it my making podcast in these last couple of episodes so again welcome to my making podcast. My name is Marlene, I'm a knitter from Germany, specifically from Marburg and today is Sunday the 11th of February. Um, I thought that I'd film today and get my make nine out there. <laughs> um, I have been thinking and talking about the whole like intentions and setting plans for the year quite a lot already but I've also um, kind of made a little make nine list in my making notebook. And so today is going to be a regular episode, but I'm also going to talk through some of the plans as I've been finishing some of them already. And I also am not going to be able to film next weekend since I'm going to see Noah Khan in concert, live in concert in Cologne, um, which I'm so happy about. And so, yeah, I thought I'd try and get um, this episode filmed today and then maybe I'll get it edited throughout the week and then... Can put it up whenever so you'll you guys will have something to watch if you do enjoy my videos um yeah let's try not ramble on too much i'm going to go through my finished objects works in progress my spinning update some acquisition two media recommendations or three rather and then i'm going to share which festivals i've planned on going to this year i've actually set some plans like set in stone. <laughs> I've booked the like train tickets and even one flight ticket and then I mean it's all subject to change but yeah I wanted to share since maybe some of you are also going to be there and then we can I don't know try and meet up maybe or if you do see me there whenever come say hi and then we can chat a bit about what we all love which is knitting um, and spinning and crocheting and whatever. I've actually tried crochet for the first time last week and it was really fun. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's neither here nor there. I just wanted to um, mention it. We're actually uh, currently decorating the shop for uh, the like upcoming spring um, season. And that's why or where I on a really slow day at the shop, Mella uh, showed me how to how to crochet a flower. And I did. So I might insert a a picture here but yeah I do have quite a lot of finished objects since um, it's been a while since I did it's not a while but I've filmed some other uh, videos in between and I've been in a finishing mood lately I had lots of lots like lots of um, whips going on just a couple of weeks ago and let me actually check I think now I only have, uh, I only have seven whips going on anymore. I've had like nine and two of those are scrappy blankets, which I count as like super long-term projects. So I'm down to round about five actual projects, which I feel uh, quite good with. So yeah, let's get started. My first finished object is the pedal drop socks by Florence Miller who is handmade by Florence here on YouTube and on Instagram. I've had these uh, this one sock already finished last year and it was my goal to finish the second one in January so I did. So yeah these were my first finished lace socks and my first attempt at lace socks um, I would really recommend to uh, those to a person who hasn't done lace before. It was my second lace project since I had done the Corin Cardigan by the Crea Bea before, but uh, my first lace sock. And I can't wait to wear them maybe in my like Birkenstock Boston or uh, in my boots. I'm not sure. These are going to be, these have so springy and I actually took a really nice picture of them, I think. I uh, try and take nice pictures of socks, but I do find it's a, a quite difficult thing to do. So yeah, my first finished object 
are these petal drop socks and I knitted them in Olivia and Oliver Fibers classic sock in the colorway cotton and I think that is a perfect fit for these for this pattern so the next finished the next finished sock that I did this month were the Aviva socks by Lydia Rababa I had tested this sock pattern last year I think maybe in November And so it was my second goal of this year to finish this pair, and I did. Um, it was the, I think, Legolas and Deep Breath Before the Plunge colorway from the Long Dog Yarn um, Lord of the Rings collection. So this is a really special um, colorway, which I really love. And it was my second lace uh, sock here. I'm not actually able to see really well that there is this lace pattern in here. Maybe this way you'll be able to see better. I'm not actually like a thousand percent happy with the combination of yarn and pattern. I think with some of the other testers or people who've made this um, sock pattern, it looks a bit nicer with um, less speckled yarn because then you're actually more so able to see the lace pattern so um, if you're also planning on making these I would maybe suggest going for something that is a bit less speckled but also I will be able to see how it actually looks if I'm wearing them if then maybe like the lace somehow opens up a bit more so yeah I have finished both of these socks that I set out to finish and these are actually part of my first like kind of make nine um, goal for this year which is to finish nine pairs of socks from stash this year which kind of is trying to two birds one stone uh, with my bigger single skein stash and then also with the need to have socks because I I like knitting socks um, I have loads of single skein special yarn and then I like to wear hand knit socks so within my making notebook I've actually um it's not the nicest like I have smudged some of the um some of the writing right here but I would just wanted to give you an insight into my making notebook and I have actually put in A little counter here for my nine pairs of stash socks and this is two pairs done because I'm counting these two as like pairs even though I finished one of them each last year already all right um, next finished project was the DRK everyday cowl by uh, Andra Maori and this is my first project with hand spun wool. I'm actually going to try and put it on after showing you a bit of a close up. Let me see if I can. Might have just ruined <laughs> my whole styling of hair and whatever but yeah I hope you can see the way in which this fits it's a really kind of kerchief-esque cowl it like goes I always I mean I've, I've been wearing it like this I haven't been wearing it much since I only finished it like two days ago or maybe yesterday I think I actually finished this yesterday but I've been wearing it ever since <laughs> I finished it and um, I really like the look so I hope you can actually see what it looks like kind of like styled I have a little mirror there so I can actually see that it looks somewhat all right I actually just weighed this and I only used about 67 grams for this so that is really not a lot of yarn um, I think I kind of ended up with a, a roundabout a sport weight yarn although there's lots of thick and thin parts in there so that's just an estimation there's some 
DK, more so DK leaning parts and more so fingering leaning parts. So as like a kind of a middle ground, I would say from reps for inches and everything, it's more, more so a sport weight. And I actually have about like half of it left over still. These um, skeins I have finished up. It's a little preview on what I've been spinning on. Um, I had finished one skein, which I then knit on, and then I finished up my the rest of my spinning for this project. And now I have it left over because this is done. And I have a little nugget from my first skein also. So I would say I had around about 150 grams on this um, of this fiber. And so uh, it came out to be around the same amount um, of yarn in the end, maybe a, a couple of grams less. And yeah, I thought I'd show you kind of like what it looks like knit up and then what it looks like in the, in the skeins. These are not super neat, obviously. <laughs> like I said, this was only my second wheel spinning project, but I'm really happy with how it turned out. I'm actually really enjoying wearing it and I could see myself knitting up a pair of mittens with the leftover yarn. So that's another hint at my spinning so I don't have to talk about it later. Um, yeah, DRK Everyday Cow, I did size three, so small adult, which is only about half centimeter bigger than my head. And I was when I was knitting on it, I was like, this is not gonna fit my head. And I blocked the heck out of it when I when I had it on my black block 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 on my blocking boards I actually really really stretched it out and like pinned it to my blocking board so it would work out and I guess it did so yeah I'm actually I think I might actually keep on wearing it but my hair is getting in the way so I'm just going to put it up and lastly, my last finished object is my Mudo. This is the Mudo sweater by the Petite Knitter, who's Wei Chen, who's a um, twer designer that does a lot of color work and like um, Nordic inspired color work designs and this is one of her easier color work projects and whenever I saw her post about it for the first time I was like I want to make that <laughs> it was really clear to me that I I like the simplicity of the look that the um, the design gave and then I shopped the wool and twine shop update when she had her BFL and Mason base in the shop again and uh, I thought it would be a really nice match. So this is the undyed uh, BFL Massam, and then this is the chestnut colorway, which I think turned out to be super, super nice. And it's just nice to know that I've like knitted with naturally dyed yarn for the first time. Um, I wanted to say a couple of things about this project. So first of all, about the design, it was really easy to uh, use this as a first color work um, project which was a plus. Uh, something that I didn't particularly love with this is that the increases are so rapidly that the puckering doesn't really go away with blocking. Um, and I have talked about this to other people who have also uh, knitted the design and they had also had this experience. Otherwise, I uh, had to go up to uh, about a one and a half um, like up one and a half needle sizes to knit the color work because my tension and color work seems to be a, a lot like bigger, bigger tension, like higher tension. <laughs> I tend to knit it um, tightly, more tightly. Um, so I started with a 3.5, went up to a 5 and then within like in between the color work charts I went down to a four and a half again and then the rest of the body I knitted on a four and a half as well. But then I went down to a three and a half for the ribbings, for the ribbing again, which she didn't ask for in the pattern. So 
excuse me, I found, I found that to be odd, like not going down a needle size again when coming to the ribbing. I've never, or I have rarely had that happen in patterns. So I just wanted to do it and then therefore I adjusted it and I think that's all right. I'm actually not holding it up in a really nice way. So um, I might just put it down. So there's a couple of negative things about that. I wouldn't say that the pattern is particularly detailed, which if you're if you've knitted um, some patterns already, that shouldn't be too much of a, of a problem. If you're a knitter uh, who has a bit more experience, but maybe this is your first color work um, sweater, I, I would recommend trying this. Um, I found some of the wordings a bit more like a for example, with the picking up of the stitches after the round yoke, um, I've never read a description, like a pattern description where it was described in this way. So it felt a bit more difficult because I didn't know it being described this way, but that's not that big of a deal. If I'm not test knitting, I'm always kind of going into the, I kind of know what I'm doing mode. And so I do lots of like small modifications here and there because I tend to just do it the way I like, I know how to, especially with like knitting socks. I just, um, I just tend to do the heel flap as I know it, because then I don't have to think about it. Or if I'm picking up stitches underneath the armholes, I mostly pick up more, two more stitches. So I don't have any holes on the sides. And then I just like knit two more together again. So yeah, that's, about the pattern. If you have any more questions, feel free to uh, leave them in the comment section and I'm happy to um, try and help or like answer them. And about the yarn, I had not thought that the BFL Mashem or Massum would be this soft. It's super soft. It was a tiny bit prickly because I think the guard hairs, maybe from the Massum, which I think is less, there's less Massum in here than uh, blue face Esther and blue face Esther I've always found to be a bit more rustic than merino but still quite soft and then some of the guard hairs were sticking out the first time I was wearing it it was a bit prickly but still soft and then with wearing it for the first time I've actually just um, took a razor to it and um, like de-pilled it um, or there's actually one of these guard hairs that I was talking about I'm not sure if you can see it here they were just like sticking out and poking me. Um, but yeah, it was pilling quite a bit. Um, I actually talked to Yule from Ule & Twine about this since she wanted to, obviously, um, she always uh, likes to get feedback on these yarns that she's getting uh, spun for her shop or um, that she sells in her shop. And I told her I was, like there were quite a few knots in there, in those, um, in those hangs and she was like yeah that can happen with like it being a smaller production they have to change out the cones from which the yarn like is coming off of being then spun up into hang um, a lot more often than with commercially produced yarn which does make like that completely makes sense um, and it's not a big deal like I had to change yarn like had to put a new strand of yarn to it because I didn't want the knots in my knitting obviously just quite a few times more than I would have otherwise but I just like sewn in the ends in in a quite nice way there are a few more other ones I actually haven't sewn in the end here um, or I have sewn it in but I haven't cut it so she told me that that's actually quite common for there to be like about two knots and one hang I think was what she said was considered to be normal so in that way I didn't have more than that I don't think so that was nice to know um, and then with the pilling she actually told me that uh, her mom I think she made a cardigan out of it and she's wearing she's been wearing it for years and years and I think after like depilling it a couple of times, I could see this being um, a project that pills quite a bit in the beginning and then it tends to just pill less and less with time. I will report back on this since I just love to try out new yarns and knit with a different components of yarns since this is super soft and 
there's like this rule of thumb that the softer a yarn is, the more pilling that can occur. Um, I would just, I would think that actually it's not going to pill as much like through time. If I had, like if I'm depilling it a couple of times, I think it'll settle down in a way. And so yeah, just keeping these couple of things in mind, the puckering here and the pilling were the two things that I didn't love about the project, but overall I am super, super happy with my first color work project. I am looking forward to, I actually ordered a, a skirt, a linen skirt recently, and I can't wait to wear it with the skirt because it's the perfect length. Oh, another modification. I actually made kind of like a half, like a medium length between the cropped and the long version because the long version would have been way too long for me. I like things to be just a tiny bit cropped, but the crop version would have been like a crop top for me. Like it would have just covered my boobs <laughs> and I'm like, nope. Um, so yeah, this is like a size in between in a way. And I think otherwise I knitted size. Let me check again with my notes and I'll put it in the notes and into my Ravelry. I think it was size three, four or five. Maybe actually it was size five. I'm not sure, but I'll put it in my Ravelry notes. And there I've also um, put the measurements of this garment. So you can see um, kind of what I did, the modifications that I made, the length modifications specifically. And then if you want to, you can also make yourself a really nice first color work sweater. Um, I actually did this in a little mini cow with my friend Anastasia. She lives in Iceland and we met at Flock Fiber Festival. Her YouTube um, podcast is called For Your Sheep. You probably know of her already, but if you haven't, go check her out. Okay, I'm telling you, my hair is not cooperating today, but um, yeah, we'll move on to works in progress, which first of all, I wanted to highlight my dopamine cast on that I um, that I allowed myself sounds sounds really restrictive but whenever I finished both of these socks projects that I had planned out to finish I was like I need and I want to cast on with one of my coast to coast yarn co sock sets because I had them in my stash since last year uh, summer of last year and I was just looking at them all the time and so in love with them and so I thought it was time to knit with them. And so here I have my first finished summer camp sock. This is what it looks like. It's in the potato and leek, potato soup and leek colorway by um, Coast to Coast Yarn Co. The um, sock pattern is actually a free sock pattern. Let me check out who it is by. It's by Jill. Selinski. Um, like I said, it's a free sock pattern. It's not too difficult, so I've just kind of gone by the design elements of this sock as far as I wanted to, so I changed up a couple of things for uh, the heel flap and gusset, but yeah, throughout the whole thing, it is a four by, uh, or is it four by one, three by one, three knit, one um, pearl stitch, you can see it like this a bit better and it has these like sporty stripes with a leak which I liked and so yeah this was a three-day <laughs> sock knit I had to go to the to the dentist or drive around in a car quite a bit so I was knitting on this throughout most of it and so this went by super fast I actually have I actually have my second sock cast on already I immediately casted it on but I haven't worked on it much. It's just like half of the cuff uh, done. But yeah, this is going to be my next finished sock project and my third sock uh, FO of the year. So that would be three um, of the nine sock projects that I have planned to make from stash done. All right, um, let me see, I have this morning I was brunching with my colleagues and friends from the yarn shop. Uh, we actually had to um, kind of, <laughs> we weren't able to have a Christmas party this uh, December, obviously, because it was super busy for the shop. So we kind of redid our Christmas party today, this morning. 
having brunch at our favorite cafe and knitting. And that is what I was knitting up through all of it. It is really difficult to show, so I'm trying to, but probably failing. This is the Traveler Crew Neck by Andrea Mari that I've been knitting on for quite a while. This is what it looks like now. You can actually see this is where I was and this is where I'm now. And this is just the front section. The back is currently on a cord. Uh, you're going to knit up the front and then the back or the other way around. I'm actually not sure. And then connecting it here and here and then putting in the crew neck collar and then um, casting on the the stitches again for or casting on new stitches for the sleeves. And I think this is actually the moment that I'll finish the body. This is going to go so fast because it is such a deep drop shoulder. This is actually super big, I found. It's going to be, going to be quite uh, cropped but oversized in a way which is actually a fit that I really enjoy with like high-waisted um, bottoms and then it's going to be a really um, I think a really short um, sleeve uh, because the shoulder comes down so far actually the same like with this hollow v-neck it was quite a short sleeve which is only all, always what I'm thinking like if people are talking about however long they like their sleeves I'm like yeah, but that is not universal for like every sleeve, like a drop shoulder sleeve is going to be so much shorter most of the time from a like raglan or round yoke construction. But yeah, that's a tangent. Um, I really want to focus on this a bit more. Uh, I am currently doing a test knit as well. So these are my two focus, um, focus garment project, but I am my plan is to finish this Traveler crew neck in um, this month in February and I've, I think I will be completely able to do it. I still have so many days left and I'll be working on this some more today. Um, I think I will actually be able to finish the front section. I hope I won't forget to like put the... Should we actually do it now? I actually like that um, I think Leslie from Knit California does that where she always like puts the marker uh, like in the new position with each podcast. I don't think like I'm podcasting enough to justify doing that, but I actually like seeing it in her videos. So I have just done it now. And so I won't forget doing it after because like afterwards cleaning up the like whole like filming area after filming is always such a hassle. So. Now I've done it and I don't have to do it anymore. Another project that I have shown in a video but not in a podcast so I will just I haven't worked on it since then but I still wanted to show you is my storm sweater by Petite Knits. This is just the back panel it was such a joy to work on but since I uh, got into the test knit I wanted to finish this I wanted to finish the Mudo there were just so many other things I wanted to finish um, I have not worked on this more. I think it should be time to pick up the shoulders now. And so this is going to be the next sweater that I want to finish after doing the Traveler. So yeah, uh, this is going to be the next thing. This is actually made in size medium on Pure, Pure Gint from Sandler's Garn. And then my Traveler is, I think, size four or five again again it's all linked to my Ravelry project pages and if you do if that's not accessible to you you can always ask me in the comment section and that is with Pearl Soho Good Wool which is one of my favorite wools that I have worked with so far I love a good two ply and yeah that is just a really really nice yarn to work with <clears throat> My last garment whip at the moment is my Lauder vest, v, I think a v-neck, yeah. Um, and this it was, whoop, this is what it looks like so far. I hope you're able to see, this is actually my first cabled garment which I'm really excited about. It looks extremely beautiful. 
I'm right now actually waiting on some feedback on the pattern. I had some questions because there were some unclarities, uncla like non things that weren't clear. <laughs> so I have put this to the side until I for sure know how to move on with the pattern since I really don't want to. Uh, I have knitted and then ripped back quite a few times on this just because I did something wrong, not because of the pattern. It's been a really, really enjoyable knit so far. I've just been using just a regular old um, cable needle from Prim, Prim, which I think is a German company, but yeah, just like a couple of euros. It was really inexpensive. And I've been using that cable needle since I would also like to try and cable without a cable needle, but so far it just hasn't been working out for me. And I, yeah, I have continued using it so far. I am using the Durerum Natura Ulysse and then a just regular old woolly yarn, Surrey, Surrey silk with this. Um, and so yeah, the Surrey silk I had previously used for my Kalini blouse as well. And that's why it's marling just a tiny bit. The Ulyss is a sport weight and this was calling for more of a DK to maybe even light worsted, I think. And so, um, yeah, because I wanted to achieve the DK weight, um, I had to hold a strand of lace weight with the sport. And it turns out really good. I think the cables are still standing out enough for me at least. Um, and then another thing I wanted to mention. <sighs> oh yeah, I had to go up um, a needle size to which uh, to the size that Rebecca Rebecca closed the designer. I don't think I've mentioned that um, to what needle size she was using because that was the same thing for the sixties, and I I think she's just a really um, loose knitter and I'm more so a tighter tighter knitter so yeah that's what I'm I'm doing with this and I'm I'm really looking forward to, for those questions to be answered and then for me to be able to move on although I really understand like she's mostly doing like two three test knits all at the same time and this is a mega pattern where they are there will be like cardigan sweater and vest both in like all of them in v-neck and round neck options and so there's lots of feedback probably possibly coming in. I'm only in the um, in the vest group chat so there's also another group chat for the cardigan and sweater and I can only imagine it being quite a lot of work and in her recent like video that she posted she said that that is actually one of the like more negative parts of being a designer it's like always fe feeling guilty that people are possibly waiting for an answer so I really don't want to contribute to that. I know she is doing her best and it's just, um, I ha actually haven't had that happen to me with test knits too much that I, ha that I had to wait like on feedback, but we still have about a month and like 10 days to finish this. Um, and it's going like super well. So I am not, uh, like I'm not fearing that I won't be able to finish it. If I were like getting in a, like panic mode or it didn't have enough time to finish that would obviously be a more of a different situation but I knew I could always like send her an email or remind her of the problem and then just give her some time like to work on it actually and still get her like downtime as well from all her work and so I've just been working on other things whenever I'm having to wait for an answer which I think is completely fair. My last two works in progress are my let me try and see if I can show you my two scrappy blankets, which, um, yeah, I just love them. Uh, one of my goals for this first month of the year, which is January, and um, something that I'm continuing in this second month of the year is putting in one square each week. And this has contributed to this blanket growing and growing. Uh, actually, this, like this, um, part of the blanket has been done in January and with the relative low pressure of just putting in one square uh, each weekend I find myself finding this not to be too much of a like chore or slog or whatever 
I know it's stupid to even think about it this way, but this is quite like, it takes me about an hour and a half to put in a square since I always like to, um, to weave in all my ends. I actually said that it takes me a bit longer and then I, I time myself again because I saw Ariel talking about it in her podcast, Ari Knits. And she's like, oh, it takes me about an hour or just over an hour. And I was like, am I like just half as fast knitting as she is? Because I thought it, it took me about two hours. I'm not, but I'm also, maybe I'm just a bit slower. I'm not sure. Um, if I'm taking a couple more like small breaks maybe, or I'm doing something else uh, on the side, maybe like reading or watching something. It's not that I want to be faster. I was just a bit confused with myself. And maybe this was taking me like two hours in the beginning when I was figuring out all the techniques, but now it takes me about one and a half hours finishing one square completely with like weaving in all the ends. And I'm doing this like completely to pattern. I'm doing the measurements that she's asking for. And yeah, I have put in actually, let's talk about the colors. I have put in a um, Sorella yarns, like a brown uh, color that I got from their mini, um, kind, of, kind of like mini bundle from Flock. I put in the Coast to Coast colorway. There was actually about 110 grams on um, the main color in my sock set. And so I, like I spent most of the like yarn that was on there more than I had paid for. You know, like I always think about like paying for a hundred gram skein, but there's mostly, there's a bit more on there. So that was nice. <laughs> so I put it in here. This um, red color I got from my friend Kiliana, who's Bregendis, knitting wise, I think it's called, but in, in Netherlands, Nether in what's the like Netherland? I don't actually know what the language is called that people in the Netherlands speak so I'm sorry but she also has a knitting podcast so you should check her out if you haven't already and then there's this beautiful green color which green is yellow the beautiful yellow color which I think is also from my Sorella mini kit I'm not sure, uh, but it's it's extremely beautiful. Maybe it is from my, no, it was from my friend Lydia from my scrappy advent, I think, yeah. And then this one is from, I think it was Olivia and Oliver Fibers, a mini, or was it? I'm actually not sure. It was really difficult to remember, to remember it, but it's beautiful. And it, it kind of stretches out in the corners. So I'm thinking about adding a, um, adding a I-cord edge around it whenever I'm finished. But yeah, I've added quite a few of the Sorella minis into it actually. And then this skein that I got from my friend Chelsea, uh, the nylon sock set in the colorway uh, Jazz in the Park and then I think this little one is called Brian Park which Brian Park I actually already have in there because I got the mini at Flock as well. Uh, this main color though will be my next sock project and I'm also going to put it into my blanket and this is actually the kind of um, <laughs> introduction to me becoming an affiliate with uh, Sorella so I think you've probably heard from other content creators on Instagram and YouTube uh, about them being an affiliate with a brand that they enjoy and they want to support and then the brand offers them a cut of the uh, of the yarn that people buy and Sorella Ashley from Sorella who I actually met at Vlog she asked me if I wanted to become an affiliate with them which I couldn't believe in the beginning. I was like, you're asking me? <laughs> um, and yeah, I was just really happy that they asked me. Um, so I haven't received my uh, first box yet. I think that'll start with the spring tonal selection. At the moment, they still have their winter tonals, but 
at the end of the day, whatever that means is that if you do decide to uh, maybe treat yourself to some yarn or they have an amazing market, I love their um, wool washes. My favorite scent actually is Brooklyn, uh, but I'm really wanting to try out some more of their um, maybe hand cream, tea and stuff like that. So I'm really looking forward to my first box that they'll send me, um, the seasonal boxes. Um, yeah, if you do want to try out anything from Sorella, you could shop through my link. So without any further cost to you, that'll give me a small pushback from that um, from that sale. So I'll get a small percentage of the money that you pay for the yarn as well. And that way, I think you're going to be able to support two uh, women, like, I mean, small businesses in a way um, at the same time. So if you do enjoy my podcast and you want to shop with Sorella, you could, again, two birds, one stone. <laughs> I feel like I'm not putting like words together really eloquently. Like I said, I, I was at a brunch this morning and I feel like my social battery is feeling quite empty. So I, I, w I really enjoyed being there, <laughs> but I'm also quite tired now. So I hope you do apologize um, for me being a bit slower today but I'm almost done as well. Well, So I just wanted to share because I'm like super excited about that thing with uh, Sorella and I'm hopefully going to be able to share more about it soon. Um, but yeah, just if you want to check them out, you can just use my link uh, without any further cost to you. With my cozy comfort blanket, I have put in a couple more stripes. I'm at about like 40 to 50%, like halfway to where I actually like the, the length and everything. Because if I actually am using this way as like the length and then using this as the width, it's actually quite substantial already. So whenever I'm working on this, like maybe on the couch at night, it doubles up as a blanket already, <laughs> which is which is super nice. I'm not always showing you and like telling you all the like details about it, but I'm trying to work on them every week. So yeah. Next thing I wanted to show you is I have prepared my Traveler Shawl combination spin. I actually filmed some uh, footage, so I might just put that in here. Um, I bought two comb tops from Frau Wölfchen again, who's a German hand dyer, mostly for fiber, but also for yarn. And I got one Cor Corridale comb top and one BFL comb top from her. And when I was preparing that for my combination spin, I've actually been watching quite a lot of videos on that and talking to my friends Casey and Anna uh, about they're from Young Folk Knits and Brooke Willow, but you'll obviously know them, I'm sure. Uh, but we're spinning and knitting that shawl or cowl together. Uh, we're talking about our fiber choices and how and whichever way we want to do it. And I have decided on combining my fiber for one of the singles this way. So I'm spinning up 150 grams of fiber this way. I'm actually try, going to try and show you um, my current single. I have actually spun quite a lot these last couple of days. And then I am planning on getting another just plain brown um, braid to do a second strand with and then to do a two ply with the two of that. And then I'm planning to do the Traveler Shawl by Andrea Maori, like I said. I hope that that's going to make any sense for you guys. So I hope that I have maybe inserted some footage of me um, kind of dividing my braids. And then let me try and show you my fiber without like taking it from here. This is what it looks like. 
and um, my idea was for it to kind of get somewhat of a like slightly striped look through like being a combo spin that way and then getting a kind of barber pole look from holding it with a just plain brown um, fiber. I have not bought that fiber yet but I'm actually looking on Etsy to just get some just whatever fiber to try out. Um, I think I have been thinking about going for something like alpaca or maybe merino to try and hold it with the Corydale and BFL blend that I'm spinning up right now but yeah I haven't decided on it but that is my current spinning project and I'm I've been really loving working on it um, I think I'll try to maybe get like one of these I kind of prepared myself like these small little nuggets and I'll just try and uh, spin one of those before work uh, I actually that was my plan and then I think I spun up like eight of them yesterday <laughs> Or maybe not eight but like six of them and I had so much fun but yeah um, I have one acquisition that I really wanted to show you because it was a beautiful gift um, let me grab it and then I have some media and some wool festivals and then um, I'm going I'm leaving you I'm like I said I'm so tired <laughs> I hope you'll have a great time still without me having the best energy today so so Lindsay from Artifacts of Appreciation, she actually sent me a message. Um, she had been watching my videos for some time and really enjoyed what I was putting out. And she um, offered to send me a bat to just try it out. And she wanted to share the love, I guess, the love of fiber arts. And I said, yeah, I, I'd love to try it out. I, I had seen her work on Instagram and heard people <laughs> like work with her um, fiber but what she sent me I was not prepared for <laughs> so first of all she sent me this a beautiful letter that I'm not going to share but um, just so many kind like encouraging and supportive really nice words um, and a I think this was I'm really not sure what kind of like lace work this is but I'll I can see myself like putting it on our tree whenever it's Christmas time again so that was a first and then she had put in two um, I would say they're also comb top braids in a way I'm not sure like the preparation um, they are and she said for your practice for you to practice long draw which I think was so nice of her because we had like talked about it and that's Australian grown Shiloh farms processed by abundant earth fiber and so that is exactly what I'm going to do with them. I'm going to practice my long draw. Um, I actually have leftover fiber. I don't have a huge fiber stash or anything yet. I just have like my first Corydale that I got and this leftover and everything else I have worked with um, or I'm spinning with currently. So I'm, I'm quite happy about that. I don't want to build up a huge fiber stash. So this is some European Merino, but it's also in a bat. And so I thought this was just like 650. <laughs> this is not super special. It was from a local yarn and fiber festival. So I'm going to try and spin with this bat first. Try my long draw, long draft, long draw, and then go on and use this. And then I'm going to use these, which these are so special. I love her logo like the little crow I'm just gonna read the like little notes to you and then I'm going to put in maybe some b-roll and show you what they actually look like because uh yeah I don't want to take them out of here again or maybe I'm just going to insert pictures maybe that's easier I've taken some beautiful pictures of those this is called earthen and it's 50% how nui which I think is an Australian um sheep breed and then 40% Polworth and silk, and then 10% Muga silk. And this is a 100 gram bed, and it's hand carded, made with small farm wool and hand dyed fibers. And like, like I said, let me tell you, these bats are art. They're so, so beautiful. So this is the first. 
And then the second um, is called Draw Near, and it's with 60% Polworth and Yak and 40% Polworth and Silk. And it's also a 100 gram hand carded baths made with hand dyed fibers from the West Coast color. And again, I'm going to put in a picture. I love these so, so much. There was actually also a little stitch marker on here. I try to just keep them like, like this and intact to film and take some pictures. And actually, I don't even want to take them apart. I'm going to hold on to everything for as long as I can because I just think that they look so, so special. And I still have a couple of other things to spin through in a way before I then want to move on to spin this. I would actually love to practice a kind of woolen spun, like a long draw. I want to try long draw because I want to learn to spin woolen um, in a way. I've always like, I've just been spinning worsted um, with short forward. So yeah, that is my reasoning. <laughs> um, so thanks again so much, Lindsay, for this incredible gift. I'm like in awe. She told me that I really didn't have to talk about it if like she was, she just wanted to send it to me and I'm really incredibly, incredibly grateful for opportunities like this because maybe because of the podcast or for me to share my knitting online that people would think to send me something they had made with their own ha own hands and their artistry or like creativity. So I'm really, really thankful for that. Okay, going on to media, um, a movie, a, a film I had seen a couple of weeks ago, like right in the beginning of the year actually, was Poor Things by Yorgos Lanthimos. And I had seen um, Lobster or The Killing of a Sacred Deer or which other film did he make? Like Lobster? Let me put it in here because I, I can't remember now, but I love these movies of him, especially Lobster and the other one that I can't think about right now. <laughs> um, and so viewing Poor Things in the cinema was amazing. Uh, I really admire Emma Stone for what she did in that role of Bella. It's an incredible tale of emancipation. They have a, such an incredible way of speaking in this movie. They have some incredible camera work, some incredible uh, color. Um, and it was just funny and kind of disturbing in moments. I just really enjoyed it. It's probably not something if you're just enjoying like romantic comedy or just a bit more lighter uh, stuff. But if you're like a cinema geek like I am, I just really, really love that movie. And yeah, I was flashed by it. Another recommendation would be a book. And that is Remarkably Bright Creatures by Shelby Van Pelt. That was uh, actually also the first um, book that I had read at the beginning of this year. It's um, partly written out of the perspective of a gigantic Pacific octopus and it is an intergenerational like drama novel in a way which I really like as a as a genre as a genre. I never am able to say that word correctly so forgive me, but yeah, I really like that kind of book. <laughs> um, that type of book, that group of books, intergenerational um, drama or like tale. And yeah, I just like the book. Nothing really more to say. It was quite a bit frustrating for everyone realizing the plot of the book and then just the people who are affected by it, not really wanting to realize it. But overall, it was just really enjoyable. I actually like listen to it as an audiobook um whereas i also like to to read books like actual books um just uh, i'm just changing it up because when i'm knitting i also like to have an audiobook going sometimes because i do i am able to read and knit but sometimes you just want to i don't know like relax your eyes <laughs> i'm not sure um, and yeah, the last media recommendation is actually music. 
this is going to be the first time that I recommend some music to you. And this is actually a recommendation that I got myself from my partner's best friend, Lena. She uh, has recommended to us Last Dinner Party and I have been listening to their music just like up and down, up and down the whole, um, the whole album. And it's fantastic. Um, I really enjoy it. I don't have much more to say about it. It has like classical elements. It reminds me of my time as like a kid being in ballet, but then it's also like, it has so many musical themes that you feel like you know, like there is a familiar familiarity a familiarity I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly but there's a way in which it makes you feel like you know the music but then also it breaks like in a moment where you wouldn't expect the music theme to break and then move on and so it just really I don't know it's just I can't get it out of my head and I think that's a it's a great thing about music and yeah okay so lastly uh, within this regular podcast episode, I wanted to talk about the festivals that I'm going to within the first half of this year. And then I'm going to put up my Make 9 again and just maybe go through those plans with you just a tiny bit. I'm going to pick it up and like talk about it throughout the year. So it's not just something that I wanted to talk about too much since I, I do really just made it for myself. But I wanted to share that because I thought that would be nice. So firstly, I'm going to go to the H&H &H Cologne um, event in Cologne, obviously in March. Um, but that's not so much of a festival than more of a event that people who are in the industry come to and then um, maybe talk to uh, yarn providers. So I am going there uh, through the yarn shop that I work at to uh, maybe be talking to some of the suppliers and people or companies that we do resell their yarn but I am going with two friends who are also knitters um, and designers and um, yeah I think that will be fun we'll we'll just take like a little day daily road trip a little just um, yeah I think that will be fun and then I am going to Swiss Yarn Festival which I was really grateful for a kind person that I knew also through just doing this podcast, which is sometimes I feel crazy thinking about it, but she had uh, offered to host me throughout that festival. And um, yeah, I'm just excited to see how all those festivals will differ because I think they surely, surely have to differ in a way. They, they surely will all have their, um, their, special parts. Um, I would have loved to take in a course with Natasha Hornby or Natasia Hornby. I'm not sure how to correctly pronounce that. I'm actually going to look that up, up after filming again. Um, and she's doing a course about photographing knits, which I think would be really helpful for my role as a uh, like marketing person for the shop as well. And then I am planning on going to the Woolly Good Gathering in Edinburgh in Scotland. I am so excited to go. I'm really thankful for um, to Venetia, who is the Woolly Worker here on YouTube, um, for inviting me to stay with her for the weekend. And I'm really excited to be in Edinburgh for the first time. I always wanted yeah, to go there and visit the city and just Scotland in general. And so this will be my first um, time and I think it'll be super special doing it with her since we have found each other as friends through doing this YouTube thing. And I think that's just really nice. So that'll be, uh, I think about a week after my birthday in April and I'm really looking forward to that. And then the next thing that I have booked my train tickets for is the wool weekend in uh, the wedding wool weekend in Berlin. I was not able to go last year, but I really wanted to. And as luck would have it, one of my um, oldest friends, she actually lives in Berlin now. We had studied here in Marburg together and she moved to Berlin a couple of years ago. 
and since we hadn't really been able to set a date to see each other again these last couple of months we always kind of missed each other whenever I drove to Berlin she had something else going on and uh, when we got my partner and I we actually wanted to visit her for her birthday last year we we caught COVID and it was just yeah really sad and this way we can actually have a nice weekend together I actually got another ticket for her so she could come with me she's not a knitter yet <laughs> if you know what I mean um, I might be able to per per persuade her like lure her into the hobby um, but yeah we're going to go and we're going to grab some really nice food off like I just love going to Berlin I actually have some more um, acquaintances kind of like knitting knitting buddies on Instagram that I would really like to grab a coffee with and so um, yeah I'm actually really excited to see them uh, if that works out that would be super lovely but yeah I've got the tickets for all of these events um, like the train tickets the Willy Good Gathering I haven't seen like tickets being sold so I don't have a ticket for that yet but everything else I've got tickets for and so yeah I'm so very excited <laughs> uh, the Wolf Festival in Kassel and the Wester, whoops, Wester Wälder Wolffest um, as well as the Woolcraft Festival and the Hohenloher Wolffest which are four German wool, woolly festivals like fiber festivals within my like closer area I think the furthest would be like three hours to drive I will see if I be able to get there I would like to go to some of them maybe I can um, persuade Hannes on going there with me maybe for like a little uh, date weekend and uh, it would be so nice to have him like join me and us maybe taking a trip for them but I'm just not sure about being able to make it to all of them <laughs> So yeah, and then uh, with wool, uh, with Flock Fiber Festival, at the moment, even though my friends have offered to host me there, um, which is so kind of them, I tickets are just extremely expensive. Like flights are just really expensive at the moment, and I couldn't justify just traveling up for the festival for four days. My jet lag would be so bad and. If I were to uh, travel to the Pacific Northwest again, I would really, really love to get to some more um, national parks and drive around and like see some, maybe go to Portland and like explore this, the, the area again. Last year's um, trip to see Chelsea was just so magical. Like it was extremely special for me to be able to do all of these things with her and see all those places. And I just, feel like I would cut myself short and um, just going there for the festival even though like flock is or would be one of the most special reasons to like go anywhere but I'm 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 just not sure if it'll happen this year I'm I don't think it will but I have so much like other stuff going on which is, is great and I hope and I'm sure that flock is going to be such a hit again this year so I'm pretty pretty sure that Jess is going to continue this so I might have to ask my friends to grab me a um, crew neck again because the color of this year's festival is just amazing like this burnt red like orangey color uh, it's just so right up my alley so I might have to ask them if they could grab me a crew neck shirt or like yeah a sweatshirt and um, maybe send it to me as kind of a what is the word as kind of like making up for not being able to go there but yeah you can't have it all um life is freaking expensive um obviously and i am really 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 thankful for all of the things that i am actually able to go to and then one last thing is that i am hoping to do a little private knitting retreat with some of my friends that i met at Barcelona Knits. They are coming from the UK and uh, Belgium and the Netherlands and we're planning on meeting up in Belgium um, I think in June. I think we set uh, a weekend date in June and so that is going to be so nice. We're just going to be chatting and knitting and having wine and yeah I'm really looking forward to that. 
looking forward to that. And so, yeah, <laughs> these are all my um, kind of event plans for this year so far. And then let me talk to you about my make nine plans again. Um, I have, or I will be able to put up a little visual for what my make nine looks like. And I have actually ticked off the Mudo already and the handspun DRK everyday cowl. So I have done two of my make nine plans so far and I have knitted two of my or two and a half of my um, nine pairs of stash socks. So that leaves me with the Lana vest which I really would like to do but I don't think I'm gonna do right after doing another cabled vest if you guys understand that it's just I think I will have to have something in between that is not cabled. So I'm thinking about maybe doing the Amy slipover next, which is from a Sanders Garn um, magazine. I am currently working on my storm sweater, which that will be eventually become a finished object. I am also planning on starting a cumulus blouse. So that'll be an easy goal finished because we're doing the mini cumulus cal. My friend Julia and I, we have a discord server. I'm going to link the discord server. If you want to knit a cumulus blouse tee, uh, O-neck, V-neck, whatever one you want to make with us, we're going to cast on around the 1st of March. Um, so you can join our discord. It's just a really casual knit along. Lots of people actually have already joined, which I'm so excited to hear. There's like people from Australia, from Austria, from Germany, from the US, from uh, lots of different places in the world. So I'm th I think that is fantastic. We're going to chat more in that um, Discord server. So go uh, check in if you wanna if you wanna knit that as well. And then there's some future plans. For the mini mock neck, I actually have the C change fiber skein that I got at Flock hanging up on my pegboard that I want to use for that. Um, but that's obviously going to be a warm weather knit. My worsted hat, uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to do the Alaska hat. I think that is the one pictured. But I could also see myself doing a Jacques hat by Paula Strick. The Alaska head, I'm actually not sure who the designer is. I'll have to write it in here. I didn't write it down. It's just a more so general goal of doing a worsted hat. I don't think I own any of those patterns yet. So they're in my wish list. If you do feel so inclined, you can always give me a pattern if you want to, I don't know, support my content and my work here on Instagram. I always say Instagram, it's YouTube, sorry. Um, but yeah, that'll probably be a more so like cold weather knit and I can al also see myself making more of those maybe as gifts. I actually have quite some stash yarn to use for worsted hats and I have shopped the Coast to Coast Yarn Co pre-order, the like coffee house collection, which was so beautiful and I got one specific skein of worsted like coffee brown to make one of these hats so that was what i was thinking about when i was making that plan and then lastly is actually the last of the nine plans is an advent scrappy north easterly blanket as you can see i love my scrappy blankets and i don't know why i feel like i need to cast on a third <laughs> but i have a whole basket of minis mostly from my recent scrappy advent and my um Phoebe and Mercy weekend advent and just scraps that I have used in both of my blankets already but I still have left over so I'm just thinking about casting on another scrappy blanket and they'll all look so so different which I, I just love the look of the North Easterly and that pattern I actually got gifted by a kind of viewer so thanks again uh, for that the DRK everyday cow also I got gifted and now the traveler shawl Casey gifted to me which I'm like thank you so much to all of you who are just kind people who gift out patterns another thing about the yarns that I have is that they're a lot more cool toned and not 
all of them are in my particular color palette that I I feel like this really is like everything I have knitted with so far within these like last three years. This is like such a me color palette that I just want to have another blanket that I'll more so maybe put in cooler tones and maybe blues and like stuff that I don't usually like tend to run towards but I still love those colors so yeah I'm at this point in time I think I might just be casting that on in the colder season again so I can maybe cast off one of my blankets that I actually have going on so I will always just stay at like round about two scrappy blankets Although, honestly, they don't give me any, like, feeling of stress or pressure to finish them. So why not have three scrappy blankets? They all serve a purpose. I love working on them and whichever way it goes. So these are my make nines. I would love to hear if you've also created something like this. Like I said, I have put this into my notebook. This is not the neatest notes, but I still, I still really... <laughs> love those um i've actually been keeping up with my whip wednesdays and then scrappy saturday or sundays and the only two finishing um, plans that are still open for my q1 making and then i have some more cast on plans are the storm sweater and the traveler crew neck so i'm pretty sure i'll be able to finish both of those in q1 which i am counting the first four months and then I mean, you know what a Q1 is, so I don't know why I'm trying to explain it. Um, and then I have planned on starting the Cumulus blouse and the Dad's sweater. Uh, I had previously thought that I would also cast on the Lana vest and the North Easterly blanket, but I'm feeling more so like just knitting on what I have going at the moment and then casting on the cumulus blouse and see where that takes me. I might want to cast on maybe a summer knit around about April already as well. And so these things are, they're not set in stone. I just want to keep it fun and light. These things just really help me keep myself accountable. And I love planning, obviously, if you couldn't tell already. Um, and yeah, um, one, whip that I couldn't show you if you're like matching up the numbers and we're like but Marlene you said you had five um whips I actually cast it on a hat from the 52 weeks of accessories book that hasn't come out yet but we have it at the shop um so we are able to make uh samples for the shop and I casted one of those samples on already which I'm going to make the I can't Think of the name right now so i'm going to put it here she has fantastic designs and two of her designs actually are in the book coming up i'm going to insert some pictures and her name editing marlene is going to hate me for all of these things that i i'm just like let's put it here um but yeah i really like the look of that and i uh will be doing that within a little cow that we're doing at the shop at strick verliebt which I think is fantastic. And then I would also love, that's not part of my make nine, but I, I, I need to state it here because I really, 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 really want to do it, is a cabled hat. Could be the um, August hat by, sorry, Nordland, or the weekend hat by Hiromi Nagazawa. I think actually I'm going to go for that weekend hat by her. It just looks fantastic. I've had it on my wish list for some time now. But now that I am, I'm actually knitting cables, I'm like, you love cables. You need to do more cables. And I don't want to do too many like plain hats anymore. I want to also have fun with hats. Maybe do a pom-pom. Just do something like that. And yeah, another goal is spinning for the Traveler Shawl. I'm doing that. Um, also, thank you for all your cable sweater recommendation that is another thing i would love to do this year um i'm still thinking about it i might just do another lauder sweater whenever i'm finished with that test knit but yeah i'm not sure yet uh, i want to sew a garment especially i want to uh, make more vests and slipovers and i want to knit more really wearable 
uh, kind of like summer tops and tees and use more from my single skein stash, which corresponds with me wanting to um, do nine sock stash socks. But yeah, I'm rambling now. I'm hoping you enjoyed this video. There are just some things mixed in here at the end of this roundup. I hope you enjoyed this making podcast episode. I hope you're doing well, taking care of yourselves wherever you are in the world. And I hope you're getting loads of knitting time. I would love to know what you were working on while listening or watching this podcast. If you do feel so inclined to share some thoughts about what I was sharing, um, whatever you were working on. And then I hope to see you back next week or in two weeks, maybe for another podcast episode and my February roundup then, I guess. I've been doing quite well on my knitting more than I'm buying, like getting out more <laughs> meters than I'm actually taking in into my stash. So I'm pretty proud of that. Um, it's going well so far. And yeah, I'm going to lie down now and knit some more because I'm, I'm tired and it's Sunday. I'm going to make myself a cup of coffee and then I'm going to knit on my traveler crew neck and I'm hoping to finish with whichever front or back I'm currently working on. So I hope you're doing well. Take care and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.